What is up people, Dunny here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at four different systems that you can be using to make your life easier when using filters. But first, coffee. And the intro, roll, roll the intro. If you've been following along with me for a while, you'll know that I've already put out a couple of videos about the use of filters and how they can help when making your videos or taking photos. If you were to catch me out and about shooting, you'd probably see me with the Peter McKinnon variable ND from Polar Pro on the end of my lens pretty much all the time. But using filters that screw onto the end of your lens like that can be a little bit annoying if you want to switch between having them on or not having them on quickly. And that's where some of these filter systems come in handy. Now, before we get into the filter systems, I really quickly wanna talk about step up rings. If you're new to buying filters, it's very important that you know what the thread size is on the front of your lens. Usually this is marked inside the front there and there'll be a little number and that'll tell you what your thread size is. Now, in order to get your filters onto that, they have to match, but you don't necessarily want to have to buy a bunch of really expensive filters for each of your lenses if you've got multiple sizes of lenses. So what you can do is buy step-up rings. Basically, what step-up rings do is change the size of the filter thread on the front of your lens to a different size. So for example, this is a 72 millimeter thread, and by putting this on, I've now made it a 77 millimeter thread. So I can buy just 77 millimeter filters and I can make them fit on all of my lenses by using these step up rings. Typically what you wanna do is whatever filters you're going to buy, make sure that it's bigger than whatever the biggest thread size is on your largest lens and then get step up rings to convert all of the other lenses to that one. Now that being said, I chose to go with 77 when I started getting filters and I really do wish that I would have gone with 82 millimeter, basically the biggest size that you can get, because every once in a while I run into the problem of having vignetting on my super wide lenses. And if I ever do decide that I wanna buy a lens with an 82 millimeter thread size, I have to buy new filters. So now that I've got my step up ring on there going from 72 millimeters to 77, I can screw on my filter and I'm good to go. Okay, let's talk about some of these systems and how they can change the way that you use filters. First of all, we've got the Alter RFS. Now this is the only company of the four that doesn't actually make their own filters. This is just a system that makes it easier for you to use your own filters. It's a simple concept that can be super handy. There are two main pieces. There's the piece with the hinge, and this is actually where you'll thread your filter onto. And then there's the piece that goes inside that you'll connect to your lens. Now to make life a little bit easier in getting this thing on and off, they've given you this rubber piece, which I'm pretty sure is is like a jar opener. Great implementation of something that I think already existed. And to attach this, all you do is place the filter system over top of your lens and start to spin that inside part so that it tightens down against the other part. Once you get it kind of hand tightened, you can use the rubber jar opener to tighten it down even more. And once you've got that all set up, you're pretty much done. You can now thread in your filters. And now it's nice and easy to choose whether you're using your filter engaged or disengaged. Now I've been using this system for a while now and it's super handy, especially for when I'm traveling or if I'm just running and gunning and things are moving quickly and I need to decide really quickly whether I need the filter on or if I need it off. It's nice not to have to screw on and unscrew the filter over and over and stash it in my bag. I can just flip it to the position where let's say I'm outside and I need that filter or if I go inside and it's a little darker, I can just take it off without actually having to take off the filter. The downside that I found to this specific system is that it's a bit of a pain to get this thing on and off. So it's not something that you're gonna want to do regularly. It's something that you're gonna want to get the alter system and put it on the lenses you want it on and then leave it there. So you can just attach the filters that you need and constantly be using it with the alter on. And the one other thing that I found a little tough is just that the hinge takes up quite a bit of space, it sticks out. So if you're used to storing smaller lenses in your bag, 
this is gonna just need a little bit of extra room to fit. Now the Alter RFS comes in two different types. The regular RFS, which doesn't change the thread size. So if it's 77 millimeters on the back, it's also 77 millimeters on the front. Then it also comes in the RFS Plus, which acts as a step up ring as well. So you get to choose what you want the backside filter thread size to be and the front size. So for example, this one is actually the RFS Plus and it goes from 67 millimeters to 77 millimeters. So I don't need to use a step up ring. This is doing the step up action for me. So ideally, like I said before about step up rings, if you wanted to get Alter RFS Pluses for all of your lenses, you could convert them all to the same size and use the same filters throughout on all of your lenses. Okay, moving on to the Freewell system. And I really like this one because it uses magnets and I'm kind of a sucker for magnets. The way that this system works is that you screw on the magnetic plate to start with and it's very thin so it's not taking up any space and then you take the Freewell magnetic filters and you snap them on. Pull them off just like that. No more screwing back and forth to get them on and off. They just snap into place and it's super easy. They've got a whole set of filters that you can choose from so you can get NDs or you can get circular polarizers. And the magnetic system is actually stackable too. So I've actually got on here a circular polarizer on top of an ND filter. And then just to make it even a little cooler, they've also got lens caps that are magnetic. It also has a thread on the inside of the back plate so you can go ahead and use your normal filters threaded on there just like that. The magnetic back plate is also a UV filter. So if you're the kind of person who likes to have a UV filter on your lenses to protect them, this is great. Or if you're the kind of person who doesn't like UV filters, you don't like putting that extra piece of glass in front of your lenses, there is a blank one. So this is just the magnetic plate, but without any kind of a UV filter in the middle. So you kind of have the option there. Now, the only issue that I really ran into when I was using the Freewell system is just that there were a lot of little pieces going on and you have to try and keep track of them or have a good storage system. And because I like to use a variable ND filter most of the time anyway, I found myself still reaching for my Peter McKinnon filter and not really using the Freewell filters that they send to as much, which kind of defeats the purpose of having that magnetic system. What I'd love to see them do is actually make a small ring, something similar to the base plate with the magnets on the back of it so that you could attach that to whatever filter you want and put that filter onto their system magnetically so that I could use any filter with this magnet system. That would be cool. The Alter RFS and the Freewell system are the two in this bunch that work with circular filters. So if that's what you're looking for, you might be able to stop here, but the other two are also very interesting. Let's shuffle this around a little bit. This is the Nisi V6 and it is a square filter system that holds standard 100 millimeter filters. When they sent it out, they asked me what size of lenses I had so that they could send a bunch of different step up rings for me. So make sure if you do end up looking into this system, you get the thread sizes that you need. If you want to get step up rings for them, they do offer that. I'm going to throw a 72 millimeter step up ring onto this lens. And then the middle part of the system just screws right on. Now currently in there, there is a circular polarizer, but it is possible to take that out. And I believe you can replace this with some of their other circular filters that go in before the big 100 millimeter filters. On the side of the system, there are these little wheels that you can push to turn your circular polarizer and get the different levels of polarization. There's a little knob that you can pull on the side that allows you to get the front part on and then you can tighten it down with this knob beside it. Now there are three slots here where you can put square filters. The pack that they sent out to me comes with nice little cases for the system itself and for the filters that come with it. And in this case, the filters are three, six, 10 and 15 stop ND filters. But because there are three slots in this system, you can actually stack them as well. So we take our square filter and slide it down from the top. And now we've got our three stop filter in there. Now the biggest issue that I run into with any kind of 100 millimeter filter system is just that it takes a lot of time to set up. It's not a run and gun situation. This is the kind of thing that if you're out shooting landscapes or if you have lots of time, this is gonna be perfect. Or if you even know what situation you're gonna be in and you can set up ahead of time, 
this might be okay. But if you're out running and gunning and you need to be able to switch really quickly, this might not be the way to go. Another nice thing about the 100 millimeter filters is that because they're so much bigger than the front end of your lens, you should get less vignetting than you would on a circular filter that fits right onto the end of the lens. Again, like I mentioned before, if you get filters that are significantly bigger and use step up rings, you might be able to kind of combat that vignetting a little bit, but with the 100 millimeter square ones, you should be good. This system feels really good. It feels like it's got a nice secure hold on the filter while it's in there. It doesn't feel like it's going to go anywhere. And the circular polarizer is nice and easy to change with these little wheels. Using the 100 millimeter filters feels really nice. The Nisi ones that it comes with specifically have this rubber kind of foamy kind of material on them that makes them fit really nicely. And I think it helps to block out any light leakage that might happen with them. And the locking pin on the side is a nice touch so that you can move it however you want it. If you're using graduated filter or something along those lines, you can spin it a little bit and then lock it into place so that it's not going anywhere. Now let's take this off and get on to our last system. Oh, and also the other thing about big 100 millimeter filter systems is that they take up a lot of space. So if you're traveling light and you just have like a backpack or something like that, like even with the nice thoughtful cases, which are really nice, this does take up a lot of space. And moving on to the final system, it's the Haida system. It's another 100 millimeter system with some similarities, but some really cool features as well. Again, comes with a nice little case. Now again, like the last system, we've got step up rings to attach the system. So you wanna make sure that you get the right size for your lens. But unlike the last system, this doesn't use a thread on both sides. It only uses the thread on the lens side. The other side is more like a groove that you attach the whole system to. So we'll grab our 72 millimeter. And then there's a lever on one side. This is a little easier on a tripod, but you pull that out. Make sure your grooves are sitting nicely. When you let go, it's now locked in the groove and it's not going anywhere. Now, unlike the Nisi, the front end of this only comes with two slots, but it does come with the necessary tools to actually extend that to three slots. And just like the Nisi, it also has a circular polarizer when it comes and it has a dial, so you can dial that in from the outside of the system. But the thing that makes this a little more unique is that that circular polarizer is actually a drop-in filter, so you can take that out super easily. All you do is pinch these two little tabs at the top and you can pull it in and out and you can replace it with other things if you want to. For example, this is a three stop ND filter that you can put in there and then stack 100 millimeter filters on the front of it. Or if you don't want to use any filter in that slot, it also comes with an empty filter holder essentially to drop in there to make sure that there's no light leaking in through where the holes would be if you took everything out of that slot. Now Haida also sent along this graduated filter. And now if we're shooting a scene where the top part is bright and we want to darken it without touching the bottom part, we can use something like that. Now, like I mentioned before, the Nisi filters, which are also 100 millimeter filters, will fit in here. I noticed that because of the thickness of them with that little gasket type thing that they have on it, the rubber foamy kind of part, they don't fit too well in here. And I do think that there must be a little bit of variance between 100 millimeter filters. So if you do get this system or any system and you're going to buy filters for it, make sure you do your research to know whether those filters are going to fit nicely with the system. One thing that I would have loved to have seen on this system is a way to lock it. It's nice that you can move this however you want for that graduated filter, but it isn't nice that if you bump it, it can move on you without you intending it to. So as far as what works best for me, I would say it's probably a toss up between the altar system, which I really like for the ease of use of just kind of leaving it on, but being able to quickly take off filters and put them back on filters of my choice not necessarily using something from a specific system but also the free well with the magnets is really handy especially if you're okay using specifically the free well filters that's really nice but it's cool that they also gave you the option to have screw on ones as well the 100 millimeter filters are known for high quality those kinds of things but it just doesn't work mostly with my workflow 
if you're something like a landscape photographer or someone who is going to set up and take your time and is not just running and gunning, the 100 millimeter setups might be better for you. You're gonna get great quality out of those. Not that you won't get great quality out of all of them. And that's really what this is all about. It's not so much about the quality of the filter, it's more about the ease of setup and what works best for your workflow, which system is going to be best for you. So I wanna hear from you. Leave a comment below and let me know which system you think would work best in your workflow. And on your way down there, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button. I will leave links to all of these systems in the description. So if you wanna check them out further, it'll be down there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.